there. Dr. Charles Stanley, you know who that is? Baptist preacher out of Atlanta. He said the greatest compliment. He said it in his Georgia accent, which I can't do because I'm from Texas. But anyway, he said the greatest compliment actually the pastor could be paid is to say amen at 12 and get thrown off a cliff at 12.05. I have not aspired to that great height yet and not saying I would particularly want to. But I, I will say this, that Jesus was not afraid to do that line because of his compassion and love for those around him. His, his desire to look them in the eye and say, you've been hungry for this. Your ancestors were hungry for this. You were hoping for, praying for, waiting for God to step in like he did with Moses and rescue you from all this stuff that you're in. And Jesus is saying, today, this will happen. But because you're the one who got yourself into this, you can't be the one to get yourself out. Amen? Today, Jesus said, I am the fulfillment of this goal. And the question becomes, are you going to surrender to me and my way of doing things or keep doing what you've been doing that's gotten you here to start with. That's a good message. Amen? Gets my attention. It got theirs too. Uh, there's a famous uh, novelist who was an atheist and then tried Buddhism and then tried Islam and then tried Hinduism and tried all kinds of things. He grew up in a Christian, sort of Christian home, but he kind of tried all kinds of things, became famous, wrote lots of stuff, got lots of money, so he had some luxury to try out different things. At the, toward the end of his life, he actually gave an interview that said he, he has become a Christian again. And the interviewer was a little bit shocked and said, uh, you know, you really were sort of anti-religion for a while and anti-Christian for a while. Uh, you, you really wrote some, some derogatory things even about the Christian faith. And yet here you are proclaiming that you're a Christian now and that that's where you landed and where you, you will be uh, by God's grace. Uh, why is that? What happened to you? He said, you know, I, I tried all these things, and, and they were nice. Uh, but I kept going back to Jesus. And of all these great religious leaders, and he said, I think they're great religious leaders. I'm not mocking any religious group anymore. I'm tired of all that. But, but he said, I, I went through all these religious leaders, and Jesus is the only one that made me want to yell, Crucify him. And I said, he's got to be the one. That I that bother you a little bit? He said, Jesus is the only one who could get under my skin, who could challenge my way of doing things, who made me look at him and go, that's not my way. That's got to be some other way that, that I can't do. And he said, I just... Crumbled, I bowed my knee. I surrendered. That's why it helps us as we move into a new year to remember that as we want, as a church and as individuals, as families, to accomplish these big goals of God, you know, for God and of God, we want to we want to see prisoners freed. Amen. We want to see people forgiven. We want to see loved ones. Uh, turn their lives around. We want to see people who are oppressed or enslaved by anything. We want to see them free and experiencing the grace of God, right? We want that. Those are great goals. Those are God's goals. But remember, there's only one way to really accomplish them in our lives, in our families, in our church, in our community, and in our world. And that way is the way of Jesus. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of substituting other stuff, other ways for Jesus. You know what I'm talking about? Where I'll go, and maybe you do this too, I'll go, yeah, Jesus, over here, 
your stuff I know really works well. But you don't understand, over in this section, I mean, this guy's really uh, a turkey. I mean, I, that, whole, that whole love one another stuff works really well over here. But over here, I think you might have missed something because a left hook would do better. <laughs> and that's the part that Jesus is trying to remind me and aggravate me about. Get it? That's the part that made these people so aggravated. This is the Romans we're talking about, Jesus. We never see anything like the Romans. They're the roughest, toughest, meanest group. They got more power than anybody else. Why don't you just rally us up from here? We'll grab some rocks and sticks and guns and spears. We'll meet you out in front of the church and let's go get them. And Jesus went, you know, that's not how my father wants to pull this one off. Well, next. And they try. Throw him out. I don't know how he got out of that. I don't know if it was supernatural or if it's just because he's a big old carpenter dude. He just went, you're going to throw me off a cliff today <laughs> or whatever. Either way, either way is fine. It's just it wasn't time. You know, you're not going to. We were talking about Tombstone. We actually might get to go near Tombstone, uh, Arizona this summer. And I'm a big, quieter. Okay, never mind. I'm a fan. But there's a scene in the quieter movie where they sort of bring Tombstone to a little bit of momentary justice. But the sheriff who works for the bad guys wants to arrest them because they're not deputized yet. And, and Wyatt Earp looks at him and says, I don't think you're going to arrest me today, Sheriff. And he doesn't. <laughs> now, maybe that was the Jesus moment, or maybe it was something much more spiritual than I just described. But whatever it was, whatever it was, it became clear from that moment on that if you press too hard about Jesus' way instead of the world's way, the world is not going to like it very much. But here's the cool thing about that. They can't kill it. Amen? I mean, they just can't kill it. I mean, you can't make Jesus stop loving you. You can't. It's impossible. You can't do it. I don't care. And I mean, I know you've tried some of it. <laughs> That's a joke. But I've tried. I mean, we've all tried. I mean, you've, you've tried. You've got loved ones who are trying right now and doing a good job. You think. At least on paper. They look like, wow, if anybody can make them. You know, but even then, those people, God is saying, you know, one day I'm going to just get my way. So I'm going to just keep in my way is the way of love. I'm going to just keep loving until they just either die or surrender. I love that. That's got to be his way. Our way messes all that up. It does. My parents hear me. Grandparents hear me. Our way of making them better messes it all up. It's got to be Jesus' way. Second thing, final thing is this. So Jesus is the means. Jesus is how you get there. The kingdom of God is the ultimate goal. I mean, that's the goal. Jesus, like the song, which is actually out of the Bible, from the Hallelujah Chorus, that little section of the Hallelujah Chorus, that says the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. That's the goal. I, I used to joke, it's not much of a joke, but I, I kind of rest about this a little bit, but I, I joked with the church that I pastored, in, the church I pastored in Seattle, Early on when I got there, I said, you know what we really do? What we really do on Sunday uh, is we, we meet together to plot to take over the world for Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I had to kind of be careful where I said that. Especially in Seattle, man. But, uh, but, but there's a sense in which that's true. I mean, a big sense in which that's really true. Amen. I mean, that's what we're about. <laughs> Jesus said it himself. Here's why I'm, this is why I'm here. This text that you thought was some ancient Old Testament text that applied to Israel hundreds of years ago, 
wrong. This is about now, and this is about me, and this is about you joining me in bringing my Father's kingdom here. I'm telling you, I'm liking that more and more. Amen? That's what you and I are about. And if we're about anything else, by the way, we're wasting our time. And God bless the politicians. I pray for every politician. I don't know how they can do that stuff. That's a tough job. God bless them no matter what party they're with. But they're not going to be the ones that are ultimately carrying the ball across the goal line on this one. Amen? It's going to be Jesus. It's going to be those who humble themselves enough to follow Jesus. And again, pray for the politicians. I'm not anti-politician. I'm just saying they're not going to be the ones making the kingdoms of this world into the kingdoms of Christ. It's going to be folks like us who say, my way, not so important. Jesus' way, that's the one. And then... It starts to happen. Oh, I know. It'll get awkward, it'll get weird, it'll get hard. But something amazing will happen. I had a professor who said, what if we stop looking at the end times in such a scary way and instead look at it the way it seems the disciples looked at it? Which was this, and he, his phrase, my professor's phrase was something like this, Jesus is the last one, and therefore Jesus began the last days. Why? Because the last big plan God has for the whole universe is his kingdom. And who ushered in the kingdom? Jesus. That sounded intriguing to me. And then, he, then looking back at this text, you know what this text was about? Some of you do. I'll tell you. Here's what it was about. The year of Jubilee. Did, did you hear that before? The year of Jubilee was supposed to be on the 50th year, these kind of things happen. So God sort of set this up in their system to where... Okay, all this stuff happens, and then every seven years you get a little break on stuff, like a Sabbath year. But the seven, seventh, 49 years, in the 50th year, it's in the Bible, it's in the Old Testament. He said, we are to declare Jubilee, a time of foreshadowing the ultimate kingdom of God. What happens during that time? Uh, debts get forgiven. I get an amen on that one right there. Uh, <laughs> de debts are forgiven. People are out of prison. They're set free from prison. And, and don't freak out about that. Unfortunately, uh, prisons weren't exactly there are today. I mean, the only thing you went to prison for pretty much was debt and, you know, messing with someone's property. Everything else, unfortunately, they killed you for. But anyway, uh, you, 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 you know, you got out of prison. You, debts got, got fixed up and, and started with square one again. Uh, uh, extra help was given to those who were struggling in their fields. Uh, people came together and sort of took up the slack for people who were oppressed or poor or hurting. Uh, if you owned a servant or a slave from battle or from anything else, they were free. They were free to start a new life. Here's, that, sound, that sounds pretty good. Do you see anything? Yeah, it sounds great to me. Here's the problem. Israel never really did. Oops. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, they, they never actually fully did it. God told them to. He set it up for them. He told them he'd provide for them. They didn't trust God enough to pull it off. So they never actually did it. So isn't it interesting that this is the text about Jubilee? And he's sitting in a Jewish temple. Or something God. And this is the text. And everybody, I'm sorry, everybody there knows this is a Jubilee text. Okay, the Jubilee text. Yeah, we never did this. <laughs> oh, boy. Here's the Jubilee text. Remember what we're supposed to do? Yeah, we never did that. And then he reads it, and he closes the scroll up, puts it down, and he says, uh-oh. Now you get it? Now you get when they're so aggravated? Today, Jubilee has come. This scripture 
implying this one that you just conveniently never did, God's doing it today through me, Jesus. Some of them rejoiced. Some of them breathed a sigh of relief. Others of them went, you know, come on now. You, you're going to do it. I, we, how, how come you can do it and we've never been able to pull it off? And others of them went, how dare he remind us that we never did this? Sound familiar? Yeah, I've kind of reacted that way to stuff too. You know, that loving little reminder where Jesus goes, you know, my whole kingdom is a part of this and part of it is forgiving people and you got to need to forgive this guy. You know, I'm going, how dare you remind me that I've never forgiven him? If I could, God, I'd throw you right off that cliff. And thankfully, I don't have that power. And thankfully, uh, he hasn't thrown me off of any. <laughs> but, so what does that mean? What does this kingdom look like? Different than the world's definition of good. Different than the world's definition of success. Different than the world's definition of peace. Different than the world's definition of kingdom. A kingdom full of servants, not full of bosses. A kingdom full of loving, caring people, not of people trying to knock the other guy down so that I can be first. Jesus says today, if you'll follow me, this is the kingdom that you are signing up for, but you got to do it my way. You gotta trust my I'll let you do it yours, but you gotta trust that my way is better than yours. You see, Jesus came not so much to give us a map of the kingdom, get this, as he did to give us a guide to the kingdom, namely, namely himself. A map would be a little easier, I guess, unless you're like me and don't follow maps well. But a guide means this. You're going to have to trust me. You ever had a guide on stuff? We had a guide going into Lenin's tomb in Moscow, Russia. Lenin's tomb, he's still there. What's left of him? <coughs> kind of scary. It's dark. It's underground. There are guards there. They lead you in. There was a guard, I promise you this, there was a guard standing at attention so straight, I even quietly pointed to him when my boys were a little smaller. They were with us five years ago almost. And I said, uh, look, it's, a, it's a, 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 a statue of a guard. It's a, a, what are those called? A wax. I said, it's a wax statue of a guard. I really thought it was a wax statue of the guard. And so we walked under that assumption until there was a group of Japanese tourists behind us, teenagers, sorry teenagers, they just happen to be teenagers, Japanese teenagers behind us, also wanting to see Lennon's tomb, and we walk in and they start giggling. Now we had just been given an announcement by the guy in both Russian and in English, which is good because we didn't speak Russian, and he said, no, if we see, a, in his broken English, if we see camera, we will take it. Any noise, you will be removed. I mean, it's very strict, like, be quiet. If you stop moving, you will be removed. You know, so we were getting the hint. You, keep, you be quiet, you don't flash anything, you keep walking, you walk quiet, and you go out. Thank you. You know, we start walking. Well, as we get to what I think is a wax statue of a guard, because I knew there were real guards in there. It was so still, it looked like wax. The, it had a little light shining on uh, the. The tourist kids, the, the, the teenagers behind us, just started giggling a little bit. You know how you do. That kind of, it's so somber, it's so quiet. They start kind of giggling, giggling, and they start laughing a little bit. And I'm just like, oh, I hope the Russian guy doesn't get mad. You know, we're walking along, and all of a sudden, Mr. Wax Statue Guy drops his gun down to some kind of ready position and puts his finger up to his lips and says, shh. Yeah, I just about made a new hole in Lynn Thune. <laughs> and then snapped back to attention and just froze there again. And by the way, both kids were quiet after that, but, uh, and so was I. I think I was quiet for another hour after we left, actually. But, uh, thank goodness, uh, I guess my whole point of that is this. 
I do have a point. Uh, <laughs> A map to Lennon's tomb wouldn't have cut it. We've all been in some trouble, but what we had instead was a guide, and thankfully the guide came back and said, walk with me. And so we, we were able to sort of follow the guide around and through the sort of maze of the tomb and all that. They, I think that makes sense and makes it harder in some ways as well. Jesus guides us along the trail and the path because the Christian life, this new big kingdom that's going to set free oppressed people, that's going to free people who are bound, that's going to help people who are in prison, that's going to restore lives that are broken, this kind of kingdom requires a guide to get through it and to bring it in. Amen. Are you willing? Are we willing? to hold on to Him, to follow Him in this way, to exchange our way for His. Stand with me if you will. Lord, we want Your love and power to prevail in our lives. That means there are areas of our lives where we have wrestled with you like these folks did. We have even gotten angry at you for even suggesting that we suggest that we change our ways for yours. Maybe not in every area of our lives, but there may be some here today who, like me, at times have struggled with an area or two or more. And this day, you're calling them just as you call those folks. You're calling them just today. And you're saying to them, today, I can be the answer for you. But you have to choose to exchange your way for mine. You've been living off of your way, and it's never produced real jubilee for you. Now embrace mine. I wonder as I'm praying, is there anybody here who says, that's, you know, that, that's me. Uh, and I just want to acknowledge that and ask Jesus to do his work in me in a special way today. Would you slip your hand up where you are? We won't embarrass you, I promise, but I want you to just be honest with God. And just say, no, yep, I hear him. That's me. Anybody else? Anybody? Just slip your hand up and say, that's me. Pray for me. God bless you. I pray for those who acknowledged it and just said, Lord, that's me. I don't want to run from it anymore. I want your way instead of mine. Forgive, Lord, as you always do. Bring us close. Challenge us and change us. And for each one of us now, help us to go out of here keeping in clear vision that your kingdom is what we're about. We don't have to wait for some end-time event. We are part of the end-time event because we belong to Jesus, and he's the last word. Grant us that grace to walk in this newness of life and to be instruments of this new kingdom so that real jubilee can happen in our midst and in our world, in our town. We ask it all in the kind name of your son, Jesus, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Well, if you're celebrating today the fact that his kingdom is alive and well in you because you've exchanged your way for his way, you can sing this song in closing, and after you do, you're dismissed. Thank <laughs> you.